had just defined the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. As you have seen, it depended on using the use of uh, the outer product or the cross product. We'll focus on this term again. Now consider a matrix written down in a most general form, then a determinant is no more than its first column of the matrix, A11, A21, A31, the inner product with the outer product of the second and third column. Now, so if you write this down, then we get the following. And we may even calculate it one step further. Then we see that this equals a sum of products of elements from the three columns. Yeah, so we just continue in this way and if we look more closely at these elements and where we take them from the matrix, then we see that A11, A22, A33 are just the diagonal elements of A. And here we get a different selection from each row and each column. And A21, A32 and A13 is again a different choice of rows and columns, etc., etc. So actually what we see we is something that I would call a pattern, a pattern from uh, in a matrix is no more than a choice of uh, a, a matching of a row number and a column number. That's yeah, where the yellow circles are in then a, a pattern is no more than a bijection between the set of numbers 1 to n to 1 to uh, 1 to n. Yeah, if I have an uh, n by n matrix, so in this case we had a 3 by 3 matrix, but I've put up a, a little bit more general framework so as to be able to discuss determinant of uh, n by n matrices. So we assign to each row number a column number and we do it in a unique way so that it makes a bijection. So no row, row number gets more than one column number and vice versa any column number is associated with just one row number. We see that actually uh, we've seen all patterns yeah? so the determinant above uh, consisted exactly of all patterns which we can make for a 3x3 three three matrix and we took a sum of these pattern elements yeah, sum of products of pattern elements so the reason why we are looking at this is that um, Although we have a, 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 a good definition of a determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix, something must be generalized in order to arrive at a definition of a determinant of an n by n matrix in general. Since the outer product cannot be generalized in a unique way to higher dimensions. Well, look again at the patterns and the corresponding products. You see that actually the minus and plus signs are changing. Uh, we will now highlight the general principle that is behind this. So consider a pattern P from the rows to the columns, assigning a row to a column and vice versa. Then we define the product of P being equal to the product of the respective elements in A. J is 1 to n, a, j, p, j. Yeah, so we just have, for instance, the product a11, a22, a33. Now the determinant of the matrix is no more, as we can see, 
the sum over all these kind of patterns with a minus sign or a plus sign times the products of P. Well, what determines whether a, 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 such a product gets a, a, a plus or a minus? It depends on the number of inversions in a pattern. An inversion in, in a pattern is formed by a pair of indices ij such that pi is larger than pj while i is smaller than j. What does it mean? Well, if we look at the place in the matrix and IPI is on the top right compared to JPJ. And we say that this is an inversion. And the sign of, of a pattern P is defined as follows, and the sign of P equals minus 1 to the power, the number of inversions in P. So this means that when we have an odd number of inversions in P, then the sign is minus 1 and, and, and 1 otherwise. So look at the patterns here. So on the left hand side we don't see any pair mismatched in the sense that they form an inversion. In the second one we'll see here we get one inversion, here we have two inversions, two pairs are not aligned and here one and here again two and here we have one, two, three three inversions. So these in green, in green we show the number of inversions according to a pattern. So now we look back and the first line we see here we get a plus, we have zero inversion so it's minus one to the power zero equals one. And the second pattern we have sine minus one, also you see it here, and the second, the third one, uh, the, the sign of this pattern is one, which is a plus here. The fourth minus one, the fifth again a positive sign, and the sign of the last one is minus one to the power three equals minus one. We will now see that this may actually makes it possible to generalize the notion of a determinant for an n by n matrix. Yeah, so in green we now have the sum of p, of the sine of p times the product formed by p. Before defining the determinant we take uh, one step back to the 2 by 2 case where the determinant of A is AD minus BC and you see that A times D reflects the trivial pattern 1 goes to 1 and 2 goes to 2 and uh, BC is the first row is assigned to the second column and the second row to the first column so we have one inversion in the latter case and zero in the first case. So we see that also here for a two by two matrix that the determinant is no more than a sign than the sum of the patterns. There are only two. And we make the product of the sign of P times the product of a pattern P. So now we define for the most general case the determinant of an N by N matrix And the determinant of an n by n matrix A is the number the 
that a so actually that is a function on the space of all matrices is the sum of all patterns for the matrix a and the sine of p times the product of p with respect to a so now we have a more general definition than only the 2 by 2 and 3 by 3 case and in the following we will show that actually we we'll still have the property that, the, that a is invertible precisely when a determinant of a is non-equal to zero.